There are warning signs in our forecast. A dry winter with parts of the area only seeing half of our normal rainfall. A historic cold snap last month knocking out power and water across Texas and a La Nina pattern in the Pacific Ocean. All eerie similarities to the weather patterns of spring 2011, a year that went on to bring even more problems. It was just like a wall of flames. Our refrigerator evaporated. There was nothing. Just days after Megan Webb left the hospital with her newborn daughter, she lost nearly everything. I remember us talking about how dry it was and the kind of drought that we've been experiencing. And my mother-in-law actually called me and told me that there was a fire. And, uh, you know, I kind of thought, like, well, okay, there's a fire somewhere in the world. You know, I d it didn't occur to me that the fire was a street over from us. Days later, the 2011 Bastrop fire had claimed Megan's home. It was just the latest weather event in a year that would go down as one of our worst. That February, a three-day winter storm in central Texas, 70 hours of sub-freezing temperatures, rolling blackouts, and broken pipes. And if we didn't have rolling blackouts, we would have a total blackout. That spring, one of the deadliest tornado seasons in U.S. history. And I've never seen such widespread destruction everywhere you looked. Houses were completely swept off the foundation. Storm chaser Jeff Mangum witnessed the aftermath of an EF5 tornado. It's an extremely rare thing to have a tornado that is that strong, that powerful, that destructive. That year had six of them alone. While in central Texas, the hottest summer on record for the Austin area, Paul Ura with the local National Weather Service office. That set the stage for massive amounts of drought, extreme drought. That summer was five degrees hotter than average, one degree of which was attributed to climate change, while the rest was caused by a persistent La Nina pattern. La Nina is determined by the sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific. Researcher Mary Beth Arcodia with the University of Miami says that La Nina typically shifts the jet stream north of Texas, taking the rain with it. But when storms do come, research has found we see more hail and tornadoes. Later that year, as it appeared La Nina was going away, it instead intensified again, extending our drought. The double dip La Nina is definitely a documented phenomenon. Seven out of the historical La Ninas have double dipped. Fast forward to today, La Nina is in a similar position and the same series of weather events are occurring. This February brought an even colder blast of Arctic air, killing at least 57 Texans and leaving some without power and water for weeks. And the tornado outbreak last week in the southeast is a sign severe weather season is ramping up. Historically, we see an uptick in wildland fires during a La Nina cycle. Lieutenant Steve Gibbon, an Austin wild firefighter, is having flashbacks to 2011. We're seeing s similar drying trends. If we don't get the rainfall that we need in the spring, summer is going to be uh, is going to be all hands on deck summer. Things are already getting busy for Steve and his team. Five, six, seven, eight. Tallying 10 small fires in Austin just one day last week. And the level of Lake Travis, which supplies our drinking water, is a whole separate issue. That tree line up there is the full level of the lake. We are 23 feet lower than that, even lower than the lake was in spring 2011. Everybody should really pay attention to the March, April, and May rainfall. The spring weather sets the stage. It sets the foundation for what kind of summer we're probably going to have. We are better off right now, but it can turn the other way pretty quickly. Our soil drought status is not as bad today as it was in spring 2011. You can see there's less coverage of the red color in the current drought map. But all it takes is a couple of weeks of dry, sunny weather, and that can change. Official outlooks from the NOAA Climate Prediction Center are calling for a high likelihood of hotter and drier than normal weather. That's for April, May, and June. So fewer rain and storms overall, but remember the storms that do form could be more severe. We take an even closer look online now at KXAN.com. Just search for the warning signs story in the weather section. And in your